This video is algebraically intensive and is concerned with calculating derivatives using the limit definition of derivative. Well, there are actually two versions of the limit definition of derivative, and I'll mostly use this one, the limit as h goes to 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a over h. If you're interested, you can try reworking the problems using the alternative definition of derivative, the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. First example, find the derivative of f of x, which is 1 over the square root of 3 minus x, at x equals negative 1. Well, in other words, we want to find f prime of negative 1, so that's the limit as h goes to 0, of f of negative 1 plus h minus f of negative 1 over h. Using our definition of f, that's the limit of 1 over the square root of 3 minus negative 1 plus h minus 1 over the square root of 3 minus negative 1 all over h. Let me clean this up a bit. So this is 1 over the square root of, let's see, it's 3 minus negative 1, so that's 3 plus 1, or 4, minus h, minus 1 over the square root of 4 over h. And I guess I can replace the square root of 4 with 2. Now, unfortunately, I can't just evaluate this by plugging in h equals 0, because if I try that, I get one of these 0 over 0 indeterminate forms. You'll run across these a lot when calculating derivatives by definition. It kind of makes sense because remember the context where computing slopes of secant lines as these points get closer and closer together, so our rise and our runs are both going to zero. So it makes sense we'll get these zero over zero indeterminate forms. We have to use our algebraic tricks that we learned before for rewriting our expression in a way that we can calculate the limit. And I see two things going on here. There's square roots lurking and there's also fractions. So it's anybody's guess which trick I might want to apply first. The trick for square roots, which would be multiplying the top and the bottom by the conjugate, and the trick for fractions, which would be adding together my fractions with a common denominator. I guess I'll try my fraction trick first. So my common denominator for my two fractions here is just the product of these two denominators. So that's the square root of 4 minus h times 2. Let me rewrite my fractions with this common denominator. Continuing here, I get the limit of 2 minus the square root of 4 minus h over square root of 4 minus h times 2 all over h. Instead of dividing by h, let me multiply by 1 over h, and let's see here. Let's see if we can evaluate by plugging in h equals 0 at this stage. Unfortunately, when I try to plug in, I'm still getting the 0 over 0 indeterminate form. But I'm not out of tricks. I haven't used the conjugate trick yet. So let's try multiplying the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the top. Once I multiply out here, I'll get 4 plus 2 square root of 4 minus h minus 2 square root of 4 minus h minus the square root of 4 minus h squared. That's going to cancel out nicely. And on the bottom, I'll have 2h square root of 4 minus h times 2 plus square root of 4 minus h. I'll leave that factored for now. It's a good thing I have unlimited space here. I kind of need it. Now, on the numerator, I'm going to get 4 minus 4 minus h. Just carrying the denominator along for the ride now. Oh, I see something good. I see in the numerator we're getting a 4 minus 4 plus h. Subtracting out those 4s to 0 and then canceling out 
my H's that divide by each other, I think I finally got something that I can evaluate without getting a zero over zero indeterminate form. All right, so here we've got, so as H goes to zero, I'm just gonna get one over two times the square root of four times two plus the square root of four, which equals 1 16th. So by now you may have forgotten what the original problem was. I think I have, but let's go back up here. We were looking for the derivative of f of x, which was one over a square root of three minus x at x equals negative one. We set up the limit definition, did a bunch of algebra, first adding together fractions, then using the conjugate trick, and eventually found that that derivative equaled 1 16th. The algebra doesn't get much harder than this problem here. In this next example, we're asked to find the equation of the tangent line to y equals x cubed minus 3x at x equals 2. So the slope of the tangent line is given by the derivative, f prime of 2. So let's calculate the derivative first. f prime of 2 is the limit, as h goes to 0, of f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 all over h. So that's the limit of 2 plus h cubed minus 3 times 2 plus h minus 2 cubed minus 3 times 2. I'm just plugging in first 2 plus h for x in the definition of my function, and then I'm plugging in 2 for x. Now all of that needs to be over h. Once again, if I try to plug in 0 for h in these expressions, I'm just going to get something that all cancels out to 0 at the top, and I'll also have 0 at the bottom, one of my classic 0 over 0 indeterminate forms. So instead, I need to use algebra to simplify things and hope I can calculate the limit after that. So a good trick for simplifying here is to multiply out. 2 plus h cubed multiplies out to 2 cubed plus 3 times 2 squared times h plus 3 times 2 times h squared plus h cubed. I'm getting this from the formula for multiplying out a cubic, which I've memorized, but you can also get it more slowly just by writing out 2 plus h times itself three times and, and, and distributing. Now I need to subtract 3 times 2 and 3 times h. And finally, I need to subtract my 2 cubed and then add my 3 times 2, all this over h. Now a few of my terms cancel out to 0 here, 2 cubed minus 2 cubed. And let's see, I've got a minus 3 times 2 and a plus 3 times 2. And I notice all the terms that are left have h's in them. So I'm going to factor out an h from the top, from the remaining terms here. And that gives me, let's see, 3 times 2 squared, so that's 12 plus 6h plus h squared minus 3 over h. Now h divided by h is 1, so I'm just left with the limit as h goes to 0 of 12 plus 6h plus h squared minus 3. As h goes to 0, I can just plug in h0 and I get 12 minus 3, which is 9. So my slope of my tangent line, my derivative is 9. Now I'm not quite done. I still need to find the equation of the tangent line. I just know that its slope is 9. So the equation of the tangent line, the equation of any line, is something like y equals mx plus b. And here m is 9. So I have y equals 9x plus b. I just need to find the intercept b. Now, usually to find the intercept, I need to plug in a point. What point do I have here to plug in? 
Well, remember, we're talking about a tangent line here. So we've got the point of tangency, the point where x equals 2 and the corresponding y value is y equals 2 cubed minus 3 times 2, or 2. So my tangent line has to go through the point 2, 2, which means if I plug in this point for x and y, I get 2 equals 9 times 2 plus b, which means that b has to equal negative 16. So the equation of my tangent line then becomes y equals 9x minus 16. I found that by first calculating the derivative to get my slope, and then using the point of tangency, plugging in the x value to get the y value, and plugging that in to get b to finish off the equation. So in this video, we used our tricks for evaluating limits algebraically to compute some derivatives using the definition of derivative. This is pretty labor intensive, so fortunately pretty soon we'll learn some shortcut methods for calculating derivatives without resorting to the definition.